Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. This week, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite elements in Wix, and that is the repeater. I will be creating a series of videos taking you from the very basics until customizing your repeaters with Velo. Repeaters are something that are critical to any data-driven website uh, on Wix. And we're going to be talking about in this first video is the basics of how to add a repeater to your website, how to add elements to the repeater and design them, as well as connecting your repeater to a collection using a data set, and even some more slightly advanced topics such as pagination using a button. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is add a repeater to our website. And to do that, we're going to go to Add Elements and then look for List. So it's a little um, deceiving because you won't see repeater over here on the side. You'll have to go first to List. And then you have a choice of different kinds of repeaters that you can add. And you can either use one of these pre-designed repeaters. I always like to use one of these template repeaters down here. Uh, under blank repeaters. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this one that looks like a list. And by default, it kind of fills out the whole entire screen. I'm going to go ahead and make this item a little smaller. And I'm going to talk in a moment about what items are and what this all means. But first, I'm just going to do some minor editing so it's a little more clear what's going on. And there we go. So that's our repeater. And let's make this section a little larger and put the repeater right here in the section and make this a little smaller. Excellent. So we just added our first repeater to the website. And as you can see, it is made up of these uh, three gray blocks. And essentially what these gray blocks are, uh, they are also called items in the repeater. And they are essentially templates that will repeat themselves in terms of style or design, but can differ in terms of content. So for example, if I go ahead and I add an element here, for example, a text box, so I'm going to go ahead here and heading three, I'm going to go and add that to one of my repeater items. And you'll see this little highlighted attached to item that indicates that you're now attaching it to an item in the repeater. And boom, we have this heading three, and it appears in all three of the items. But I can go, for example, here into item two and change this to say heading two. And you'll see that it doesn't change in the other items. But for example, if I take this text box and I move it down, you'll see it moves down in all three items of the repeater. So that is what I mean when I say that they are the similar in terms of design, but they can differ in terms of content. So the design of the text boxes are all the same, but the content differs. This would be the same if we went ahead and we, for example, edited the text to be a different color. So they would all be this blue color, but you can see here that this one still says heading three, this one says heading two, and I can go ahead and I can change this to say, for example, heading one. So that is the basic concept of a repeater. You can also go ahead and either remove or add new items. So for example, if I go here to manage items, I can go ahead and delete item three. I can duplicate an item, or I can just um, add a new item by clicking here, duplicate. And if I go ahead and close the item manager and reopen it, you'll see that they are conveniently renamed in item order. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually rename these items. What we can do is we can reorder these items by dragging them around. So if I drag item two above item one, then you see that the heading two moved above the heading three over here. So to begin with, this is a very convenient little element, and it can be useful for setting up repeated elements or items on your website, regardless of data. But the real power of repeaters comes when we are using data in order to populate it and displaying data on our website. So now I'm going to give an example of how you can use Wix collections and a data set and 
populate a repeater with no code at all. So in order to do that, we are going to need to have a collection. So we should go over to the content manager. And if you don't have the content manager set up yet, you can add it to site. Now we can go back to the content manager and we have access to the different aspects, which is creating a collection, managing content, etc. I'm going to go over here to my existing collections. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about how to create and manage collections, then I recommend you take a look at some of my other videos. In this video, I'm going to be assuming you know the basics of collections and you really just need to know how to connect them to your repeater. So I'm going to go into my test collection, which I created in advance, and I'm just going to make sure that I have several items set up. So I see here that I have my first item, my second item. I'm going to go ahead and add another one, which is my third item. And I'm going to select a random image for it from the Wix media. So I'll just go to media from Wix. And I'm going to select this nice man with bun image and click apply. Excellent. So I have three items here and that should be enough to demonstrate how to use a repeater with data from your collection. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my repeater and add another element to the page from the content manager. And that is going to be a content element and a data set. So a data set is what helps us link between a collection and Wix elements on the page. I have another video which explains more basic examples of connecting elements to data. It doesn't have to repeat, be a repeater, it can be Almost any element on Wix can be connected to a collection. And what we need to do is first go here to settings and choose the collection that we're using. I only have one collection here, which is test collection. And then we set the other settings within the data set, which would be data set name. So I can change this to, for example, just the test data set um, or something else. And our mode at the moment is read only. There are three modes that you can choose from, read only, write only, and read and write. And the number of items to display here, it's 12. Since we only have three items in our collection, you'll see uh, momentarily that we will only be displaying three items. But this means that the maximum number of items that will be displayed will be 12. Now let's go ahead and connect our repeater to the data set. But before we do that, I just want to go ahead and add an image to our repeater just so that we can connect that element as well. So I'm going to go over here to images, just select a random image over here, make it a little smaller and add it to our repeater. So now we have a beautiful text and image repeater. And the first thing I'm going to do is select the entire repeater and connect it to our test data set. And now I can go ahead and connect different aspects of the repeater to the data. So I'm going to go ahead here to the text and I'm going to connect that to the, our title. And you can see here that there's, it's kind of going behind the image. So I can select the title and adjust it, move it up a little bit and adjust the height here of the container. And you can see here that every change that I make is being applied to all of the elements in the repeater. So as we said before, the design or the template stays, but the content changes. So we have my third item, my second item, my first item, and we can go ahead and connect the image as well. So you can do that over here directly from the image, or you can do that through uh, settings. Sorry, not on the data set, but on the repeater itself. So I can go to the repeater click here, connect it to data, and then we can manage all of the aspects of the elements in the item. So again, either from the image itself or from the general repeater. So for example, if I wanted to connect just the image, then I can choose the source, which would be an image. And you have to make sure that the data types are aligned. So images can only be connected to an image data type. And alt text, I can connect, for example, to title. Tooltip, I can connect a title as well. And link, I have no um, 
this isn't a dynamic page, so we don't have a link for a specific page or anything like that. But I can, for example, just choose this URL, which is also part of our data set. And you can see here now that the, the images are all set. And after our data is being passed to the repeater, I can still change things design-wise. So I can change this image, make it larger, make it smaller. Uh, I can add more elements and completely redesign. Now let's say that I want to change which data I am using or how the data is ordered or sorted or something like that. So all of that would be done through our data set. So we can go into settings. And for example, I can add a filter. And I can say that the title contains the word second. And add that filter. And you'll see now that our repeater will only display my second item. And if there were more items that had the word second, it would do, it would display them all, or at least up until the maximum that we set. I'm going to delete that filter, and I'm going to show an example of a sort. So now our sort is from new to old, but I can create another sort and, for example, say that the title should be A to Z. Okay, so this will change around the order. So my first item is first, and second item is second, just because that's the order of the alphabet. Uh, but if, for example, if we change the data and made this my Z item, then this one would be last. Okay, just for example. So that's how you would add filters and sorts. And just to show you here how the number of items to display affects the repeater, if I put this at two, then we will only have two items here because the total amount in our collection is larger than this amount. This is actually quite an important point because we are dealing with data here. So that means that Wix has to go ahead and query the data set, uh, the collection, get all the data, populate the repeater. So if this number is very, very large, for example, 20, 50, 100, and there's also a lot of data coming through, this could kind of slow down the loading of your website. So that is why we also have other things that we can do, such as pagination, uh, etc. So let me show you an example of how that pagination would work. So for example, I have only two items being displayed here. And if I want to, for example, give the user an option to display all three items, but I don't want to load them as soon as the page loads, I can go ahead and add a button. And I can call this button load more. And I can link this to our data set as well and say that the click action should be load more. So now if I go into preview mode and I click this load more button, you'll see that the next item is loaded and this will load in increments of the maximum that you set. So for example, I set maximum two, that means it'll load more in increments of two. At the moment, my collection only has three items, so it only loaded the last item. If I go back to the editor, I will show you another example of how we can use pagination in data so that you, again, you can optimize the speed of your website on load and also give your users access to all of the data in your collection. So I'm going to change this button to be a next button. And I'm going to change it to next page. Okay, so now what it will do each think of each set of items up to the max as one page. So for example, this is the first page. And the last item that we have in the collection is going to be our second page. So let's go ahead and preview that. And I'm going to click next. And now you see that we move to the next page and our next button has been disabled because there are no next pages in the collection. So this can also be done with back. And there are also ways to kind of move forward only one item at a time. You can go ahead and play around with that. So you just have to go to the button 
connect to data and see what different things you can do and see which one fits your need the best and how you want to manage your data. So that is the basics of repeaters and how to attach a repeater to a collection. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you.